Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. There seems to be a natural progression here when you get into controlling a DC motor with the Arduino. Of course, the first thing you learn is how to turn uh, a DC motor on and off with the Arduino. And from there, you learn how to control the speed of the motor. You can slow it down, speed it up. And the next progression, of course, is to learn how to change the direction, control the direction of the spin of the motor. Uh, with the use of an H-bridge, uh, using the Arduino to control the H-bridge and control the direction of the spin. And you can combine that with, uh, you know, slowing and speeding up the motor along with the uh, control of the direction of the spin. And the next progression, of course, is measuring and controlling the RPM. And of course, in order to control the RPM, in order to set the RPM at a certain speed, you have to be able to measure it. So with that said, here I have a processing sketch displaying the revolutions per minute and the equivalent uh, hertz or cycles per second of a DC motor. So let's take a look at the circuit I have wired up and how we go about measuring the RPM. So you can't predict the revolutions per minute by knowing the voltage across or the current through a motor. Um, it's sort of like if you are giving your car a certain amount of gas and then you uh, start going up a hill, you have to give it more gas. And if you start going down a hill, you have to give it less gas if you're trying to maintain uh, a certain speed. And it's the same thing for the motor. The only way you're going to be able to measure the RPM is you have to come up with a mechanical means of figuring out how fast that shaft is spinning. And you do this with either encoders, encoder wheels attached, you have something attached to the shaft. Uh, another uh, way is to break a beam uh, of light and capture the pulses of, of that beam being broken. So before I can figure out how to go about measuring revolutions per minute RPM, I was wondering exactly what I was going to measure the RPM of. Uh, I've seen people use, uh, in other videos, computer fans, and then they have the fan blades break the beam uh, of an infrared detector, uh, infrared LED. Uh, people have used Hall Effect transistors and just position them near a motor that they have or a drill, and they've measured the pulses from uh, the magnets on the, on the motor. Uh, I've... I thought maybe I was going to take an encoder wheel and attach that to a motor that I have, but I wasn't sure what the uh, diameter was of the shaft or whether the wheel that I was going to purchase would fit on the shaft of any of the motors that I have. And while I was looking on the internet, uh, I came across uh, this nice, neat little compact module that has the motor, an H-bridge, and then two opto sensors all on this one nice module and it's five volts so I don't I don't even have to have like a supplemental nine volt battery and I found this on the Mauser uh, website they're a supplier of electronics so here's the module here with the little motor running let me stop this for a second and it has already attached to this shaft, this little propeller here, and there are two optical sensors, so not just one, there, is, there are two optical sensors here, and this blade here breaks the beam on both of these. And underneath this little platform here that the motor is soldered to, so the motor outside casing is soldered to this large ground plane here plane here there's an H bridge right underneath built into this module so it sort of makes experimenting with uh, an H bridge and optical sensors uh, easier because it's all in this one nice little neat package and uh, cuts down on wiring and balancing act of whatever you're trying to set up with the breadboard and the optical sensors So I thought it was worth it. I think it was this was about twenty nine dollars. 
And there are two other indicating LEDs. They're supposed to indicate direction, but they seem to be on. Both of them on at the same time. So I'm not certain if I have something wired incorrectly or what's going on there. It has some support circuitry here, diodes and capacitors for any spikes, I guess, that you might get in the motor. Although there does seem to be, um, I was thinking of having a separate 5 volt power supply hooked up to this because it does put a lot of noise on the 5 volts. A lot of ripple on the 5 volts on the Arduino when I run this motor. So you can see there it's cutting the beam. I'm only uh, getting a pulse. I'm only measuring one of the opto sensors to use for the measurement of the RPM. And they're closer. You can see how the blade cuts the beams there. And it has a header here on the other side where you can have access to all the connections. So you can see the RPM measurement right there. And I'm controlling the direction of the spin with the H bridge that's mounted on that module. So I don't have to go and rewire up an H bridge and have a motor dangling off on the side here uh, like the previous circuit I had set up to experiment uh, with H bridge and speed and direction experiments. So let's take a look at the data sheet on this little module for a second. So this is it, Mr. Mini DC motor. Again, this is 5 volts, so I don't have to have, you know, an additional 9 volt battery uh, with a MOSFET to drive it. So that saves on some more wiring. So you can see in the description here it says the Mr. Mini DC motor is a 5 volt DC motor that can rotate both directions left and right. The rotation cycle of the motor can be read by onboard opto sensors. Uh, the feature of using the connector and sending logic to control rotation is shown below. Function of N1 and N2 pins, a directional controller, uh, EN enable pin is an enable for the driver circuit. The enable pin is active high. Uh, op A and op B pins send signal logic high to microcontroller when fan blade of the DC motor cuts the opto sensor and a logic low otherwise. It is suitable for reading motor's rotation cycle. And again, it's a nice little small size too. Nice little neat package. Here's the pinout for that connector. Here's the circuit. So you've got two optical sensors here that the blade goes through. And here's the H bridge with the motor. So these are the 5 volt pulses I'm using to calculate the RPM and these pulses get created when that blade uh, breaks the beam on one of the opto sensors and then this pulse is used to trigger an interrupt on the Arduino. So you can see as I speed up the motor the time between pulses will become less. So that's slow and then as I it's off and as I increase the speed the 
the time between pulses decreases. That's slowing down and that's speeding up. The Arduino Uno has two interrupt pins, pins 2 and 3. I'm using pin 2. So I have one of the opto sensors that that pulse is being monitored on pin 2 and it causes an interrupt on the falling edge. So in the sketch I'm saying look at pin 2 for a state change and on the falling edge of a state change when the pulse goes from high to low trigger an interrupt. Okay so we have to figure out how to measure revolutions per minute. So we have this optical sensor with a beam going across and we have a blade that's going to cut through that beam that's attached to the shaft of a motor but this beam is going to be broken twice in a revolution so if we look at it sideways you know we have this propeller attached to this shaft and as this turns it's going to break this beam twice one, two. So we need a measure of time, we need a reference point, and we can use the millisecond function. M-I-L-L-I-S. Now what happens is when you turn the Arduino Uno on, it starts counting in milliseconds. And that's 10 to the minus 3 seconds. And we say if milliseconds minus the last time we measured milliseconds is equal to a thousand we know that a second has gone by because 1000 milliseconds is equal to one second so now we're counting in seconds we have we have a means of counting uh, a progression a second at a time. So now that we know when a second of time has gone by, we'll be able to figure out how many times a second this beam gets broken. And then from there we can figure out revolutions per minute. Now on the Arduino the interrupts are on 2 and 3 but they're actually called interrupt 0 and interrupt 1. Interrupt 0 is on pin 2 and that's what I'm using. So with the interrupt function you say attach interrupt and it has three arguments. First off you say which interrupt. I'm using interrupt 0 because I'm connected to pin 2 and then I wanted to do something. I wanted to do this function here which I'm calling RPM underscore motor and I want it to trigger on the falling edge of that pulse so I say falling so what this interrupt does is on the falling edge of that pulse it's going to call this function RPM underscore motor and all that does is increment a variable that I'm calling half revolutions so half underscore revolutions and that gets incremented and that only occurs when there's a falling edge whenever one of these blades breaks this beam so every second I'm counting the number of times this variable is getting incremented and that's a function of how many times these blades are breaking this beam and that's how you can calculate the RPM you have to remember though that you have to cut this down by half because we're actually measuring uh, two pulses per rotation instead of the one 
So every second we're incrementing this variable called a half revolutions. And what we do is we just take RPM is going to equal to this variable called half underscore revolutions. And we're going to multiply it by 30, not 60, equivalent to 60 seconds, but 30 because we're cutting down half revolutions is actually twice as many uh, counts than we really want because the blade is cutting that beam twice in, in a revolution. So instead of multi, we, you know, if it was once per revolution, we would multiply it by 60. That would be equivalent to the 60 seconds, which is the revolutions per minute. So every second, we're calculating how many revolutions have occurred, and we're multiplying it to get a, a minute. Uh, we're not going to multiply it by 60 because it's the blade is cutting through the beam twice in a revolution, not once. So if we look at the code in the sketch, millisecond minus the last time we looked at millisecond, if it equals to a thousand, that means a second has passed, we detach the interrupt. So we don't want to be reading interrupts while we do the calculation. And here we have the RPM equal to the variable half revolutions, which is the variable that's being incremented each time that blade passes uh, through or interrupts that opto uh, sensor. And we multiply it by 30, not 60, because we actually have two, the blade, like I said, uh, breaks that beam twice in a revolution. And then I have the serial print where I send the data out to the processing sketch. And then here we have, we want to reset half revolution back to zero. That variable gets set back to zero. Uh, last millisecond is equal to the millisecond that we just measured. So we're resetting that. And then we're attaching the interrupt again. Again, this is uh, zero interrupt is on pin two. And we have RPM underscore motor which is the function that just uh, increments the variable half revolutions right here. And then we specify that we're only interested uh, in the falling edge of that pulse. So again, to summarize, we first have to keep track of the passing of a second of time, and we use the millisecond function, and we multiply that by 1,000, and that equals one second. And every second, we then measure how many times another variable has been incremented. And that variable gets incremented every time that photo sensor uh, beam gets broken by the blade that's on the shaft of that motor. And then we just multiply that by 30, not 60, 30 because the beam is actually getting, getting uh, broken twice in one revolution. You have to account for the fact that it's a prop. So in one revolution, that beam gets broken twice. So that's how I've gone about measuring revolutions per minute with the Arduino. I'm sure there are, are other algorithms or other ways to go about it, but that's how I solved the problem. So if you found this video interesting, please like, subscribe, and or comment. And thanks for watching.